In the headlines, Zomfara government suspends Emir for turbanning repentant bandit sets up committee to investigate. Residents displaced as floods take over Yobe communities. Crude oil hits over $100 again as petrol prices rise. And on the foreign scene, EU considers fresh sanctions on Russia as Ukraine war fuels global crisis. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashan Husseina Usman. And now the news in detail. As on first, the state government has suspended the Emir of Sabom Berniyenduto of Tsafe local government area of the state, Aliyu Garba Marafa, for turbanning a notorious repentant bandits leader, Adamu Alero, as Serkim Felani. This is made known in a statement by the Secretary of the State Government, Kabiru Balarabe, and made available to newsmen on Sunday. According to the statement, the government dissociates itself from the alleged turbanning, adding that a committee has been set up to investigate the circumstances leading to the action of the emir. In the meantime, the district head of Yendo Tomahe Garba Marafa has been assigned to take charge of the affairs of the emirate. Meanwhile, a former chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association, Zomfara State, Bello Galadi, has recommended the establishment of a special court in the state to deal with banditry-related cases. Galadi gave the recommendation while speaking with Trust TV in Gusau, the state capital, on the anti-banditry bill, which was recently signed into law by Governor Bello Matawale as part of security measures aimed at tackling the spate of attacks, killings, abductions, and cattle rustling in Zomfara State. The report. The former Zamfara NBA chairman described the anti-banditry law as a welcome development that will boost the ongoing war against banditry-related offences in the state. The banditry law stipulates death penalty for bandits, kidnappers, cultists and cattle rustlers and 10 to 20 year sentence without option of fine for anyone aiding and abating banditry-related activities. He, however, believes that for the law to be fully implemented, the state judiciary must be repositioned to expeditiously treat banditry-related cases and ensure quick dispensation of justice to the parties involved. At the moment, uh, there is an uh, anti-banditry bill uh, which has covered the aspect of uh, informants and it has provided for the death penalty for bandits and informants as well. It's a very nice development as far as I'm concerned. My uh, only fear is that a uh, uh, government shouldn't relent. Uh, you know, issue of uh, uh, prosecution, uh, because we, we have a very weak uh, uh, judicial system. Uh, we have a very uh, corrupt society. We have a very corrupt system. So uh, no matter how, uh, you know, a person is uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's been, uh, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been accused of an offence as such. You know, to bring him to book, you know, to 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 to, to mandate him to face the law is another thing altogether. So there has been a few arrests in the past. This for a former NBA chairman is not comfortable with the four special committees constituted by the state governor, Bello Mohammed, saying the committees have been politicized while members of the committees lack the knowledge and experience of intelligence gathering and prosecution. Uh, left to me, there should be uh, you know, a banditry coalition uh, where intelligence would be managed so that before you, you commit the offense, the government will have an idea as to who you are. The government will have an idea as to when you uh, were trying to, you know, when you were preparing to commit the offense, uh, so that the uh, government will not be taken off balance. Uh, there should be proper intelligence uh, for the government. A journalist, Anas Anka, said the recent call for Zamfara citizens to bear arms by the governor is a clear indication that the security agencies have not been responsive enough in the fight against the bandits who have continued to kill innocent citizens on daily basis in the state. Bello Galadi and Anas Anka, who both agree that having the anti-banditry law in place now is the best option, however, want the government 
to guarantee the implementation of the law in order to tackle banditry in the state. In politics, the People's Democratic Party 2023 presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar has said with his party's victory in Oshun State, the march to reclaim Nigeria's greatness has begun. Atiku, in a statement on Sunday, said he had affection for the people of Oshun State for obvious reasons. He said no matter how difficult a situation is, men and women of courage and astute valor in Oshun State will never be a disappointment. Atiku Abubakar further noted that at this point, when our country needs to take a break from the shameful effects of bad governance, it shall be on record that Oshun State provided the compass into that brighter future that awaits us at the horizon. The Independence National Electoral Commission early on Sunday declared the PDP candidate Ademola Deleke, who scored 403,371 votes, winner. The runner-up was the incumbent governor, Boyega Oyetola, of the All Progressives Congress, who polled 375,027 votes. The Independence National Electoral Commission, through its inclusivity drive, is paying special attention to the aged and persons with disabilities in a bid to make it easy for them to partake in the electoral process. In this report, Trust TV's Hamid Oyegbade interacted with this category of voters while participating in the just-concluded governorship elections in Oshun State. His report is presented from our studio. Elections are a major component of genuine democratic settings and all citizens are expected to partake in the process. Over the years, persons with disabilities and the aged have limited access to the democratic processes because conditions have not been made conducive for them to participate. Globally, one billion people experience some form of disability. This accounts for 15% of the world's population. This figure is too huge to be ignored. This is why the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has adopted reforms that will make the electoral process more accessible to persons with disabilities and the aged in Oshun State. These reforms were evident at various locations. At Ward 4, Unit 2, Temidire in Ibodi. At Akumosu West Local Government, Alamu, Okoyemi, was excited because he had voted without hindrance. He said INEC officials made it easy for him to cast his vote. I voted without stress. It was easy for me. I feel the disability for. Let me express my joy now. Also at Ward 8, Unit 1, Isere Ifofun, Elisha East, local government, Fatai Abioye, who is on wheelchair, said he enjoyed priority voting and that he was happy that he was allowed to vote immediately he got to the polling center. At Ward 5, Unit 5, Osain in Elisha West, there was massive turnout of voters and the process went smoothly. Aged men and women came out earlier and sat patiently while waiting for INEC officials to commence the voting. They expressed joy that they were still alive to witness another election. All we want is peaceful election at all time. We don't want trouble. We want peace for Oshun State. We want the best out of this election. We don't want violence. We want peace. God will make it easy for us. We thank God for sparing our lives to witness this election. We are happy to come out for the election. It's our civic responsibility. We want peaceful election. We want our people to be peaceful and shun violence. At Ward 10, Unit 6, Oro Ajimoko Primary School, Oroba in Ilesha Town, young girls who just clocked 18 were happy to vote for the first time. This inclusivity no doubt will promote sense of belongings in the nation's electoral system as INEC keeps improving in its push to ensure free, fair and credible elections going forward. Still in politics, the Center for Democracy and Development has commended the use of technology by Nigeria's electoral body, INEC, in the just-concluded Oshun State Governorship election. The center, while announcing its key observations during the poll, says that the deployment of the bimodal voters accreditation system, also known as BEAVERS, helped improve the integrity of the poll. 
The center commended the technology which helped transmit results from the polling units in real time to the electoral body's online portal, thereby eradicating incidences of results swapping. State governorship election. As at 6 p.m., that's on the election day, CDDEAC observed that 84.3% of polling units covered had transmitted their results via Beavers. Likewise, the INEC result viewing portal was in full operation for the uploading of results in most of the polling units. At about 10 p.m. on the election day, 99.7 of the results were available on the IRM. This level of compliance is commendable and needs to be encouraged for future elections. I only need to add that there is still a lot of work to be done going forward. We have tried to identify that, but that work is not just for those who are involved in the management of the elections only, the, the INEC and others. But for, as I said, when we started on Wednesday, it's a job for all Nigerians because we must commit to making sure that we have credible elections in this country. The new Nigeria People's Party is re-strategizing to wrestle power from the ruling All Progressives Congress in Katsina State. An NPP chairman in the state, Sani Yonkwani, revealed this while briefing newsmen shortly after a meeting with the party's candidates. Abdullahi Yamadi has the report. Many Nigerians are blaming the APC government at all levels for the crippling economic hardship being experienced in the country. The new Nigeria People's Party is not mincing words. It is holding the ruling party responsible for disunity among the people and for institutional failure. But beyond that, the NNPP is emphatic that APC cannot escape blame for the thousands of people who have lost their lives as a result of terrorism. And what about the millions of Nigerians in abject poverty hundreds of thousands displaced families and the many victims who are in the custody of terrorists. Nigerians and our, our, our people in the state are facing a very serious, if not disastrous situations of no security, no employment, no, no economy at all. Things has gone, things has gone bad. The NNPP state chairman asserts that Nigerians have a responsibility to reject leaders who are not concerned about their plight. Yankwani makes bold to say that President Muhammad Buhari has lost direction because of his incompetence. All is not well in the country. A person who is very close to, to Mr. President coming out to say that we are ready or we want to tamper with the constitutional provision we want to tamper with relevant laws and most nigerians are looking at him as if it is a joke it is not a joke it's a very serious and heavy statement which must be which challenged by all nigerians it means a lot he, he is just telling nigerians that constitution will be tampered with our laws will be tempered with because of his interest, the interest of those people who surrounded Mr. President. The NNPP has vowed to continue to pressurize the federal government to respect the rule of law and do all that is needful as enshrined in the constitution of the country. Yankwani is adamant that the party under his watch will not accept anything short of what is provided for in the Nigerian constitution that will make democracy and its institutions progress. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Katana. In a sad development, several communities in Gulani local government area of Yobe State have been ravaged by floods, forcing residents to desert their homes. The district head of Bularafa town in Gulani local government, Yerima Maina, 
confirmed the incident saying the flood was caused by river overflow following a persistent rainfall on Sunday, which lasted for more than 14 hours across many locations in the state. A resident of Bularafa town, Mbaya Bularafa, said those trapped in the flood were rescued by local swimmers. Meanwhile, the Executive Secretary of Yobe State Emergency Management Agency, Dr. Mohamed Goje, said a team had been mobilized to the scene. Earlier, we spoke to Ibrahim Saleh, daily trust correspondent in Yobe. He gives us an update on the situation. Uh, the people of the community have uh, made a distraught call with regards to uh, flood incidents that happen in their various communities. And based on the <coughs> reports this morning, about uh, four people have lost their lives to the incident of the flood that happens in 11 communities of uh, two local government in the state. That is Gujuba and the local government. Uh, as of yesterday, the uh, governor of the state, uh, Honorable Mayim Malabun, has uh, uh, called the attention of the Federal Road Maintenance Agency and then the uh, National, uh, National Emergency Management Agency to rescue, uh, to support the victims of the uh, flood. Uh, the flood happened as a result of the river overflow uh, in Bula Rafa. Uh, there was uh, a river uh, flowing uh, to the Bula Rafa community and some of the neighboring environment. And then uh, this... Uh, River overflow has caused a lot of uh, flood incidents in various communities around around these uh, local governments, two local governments, 11 communities. Four people have lost their lives. Uh, some injuries have been uh, recorded. And then the victims of the flood were evacuated to the nearest primary schools. And then food support items were provided by the U.S. State Emergency Management Agency. As of this morning, the Executive Secretary of the U.S. State Emergency Management Agency has also uh, told uh, told us that uh, the the team would would uh, support from the uh, national emergency management agency to assess the uh, level of damage in the, in the uh, of, of the flood incident in that community and then they will report back and then see what they can do in terms of providing the victims with relief items and the rest of uh, that uh, so far that is the update on the regards to flood incident in Gulani local government and some part of Gujuba in your state. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. How NDLEA arrests drug baroness at Lagos Airport. Do stay with us. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Trust News Update. Here's a recap of some of our top stories. We told you that Zamfara government suspends Emir Fatur Banin, repentant bandit, sets up committee to investigate. We also heard that residents displaced as floods take over Yobe communities. Moving on to education, the Nigerian Labour Congress has directed its state councils to mobilize for a two-day solidarity protest on July 26 and 27 against the continued closure of public universities. 
NLC gave the directive in a notice sent to chairpersons and secretaries of its state councils. It said the protest is aimed at pressurizing the federal government to conclude negotiations with the unions and ensure the resumption of academic activities in public universities. Meanwhile, former Nigerian Bar Association president and chairman of the body of benches, Waleo Lanikbekun, SAN, said the lingering strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities should be considered a national emergency. People's Democratic Party Councillors Forum from Southern Kaduna Senatorial District has lamented the rising cases of insecurity in the state. The Secretary of the Forum, Zakaria Achi, at a press briefing in Kaduna, said terrorists have ransacked communities, raped women, killed, kidnapped some, and left several others homeless. The report. Southern Kaduna is an area that has suffered communal clashes, banditry attack, kidnapping and other security challenges. The Forum of Councillors from the area said insecurity coupled with the delay in basic infrastructure have hindered development in the area. We need to remind you that the Southern Kaduna, just like other zones in Kaduna State, has been on the wrong side of news, owing to the criminal activities of terrorists. These terrorists have ransacked our villages, raped our women, killed and kidnapped our brethren. Our zone is also suffering from infrastructural decay, owing to government's negligence. We are suffering from lack of roads, lack of electricity, lack of healthcare facilities and industries. Six. The forum also affirmed the PDP primary election conducted in the area, noting that the zone needs a representative at the National Assembly that will make the zone better and rekindle the hope of the people in the area. We accept the decision of the delegates at the will of God and therefore appeal to members of our party to remain united and ensure the party's victory in all elective positions in the forthcoming general elections. We need a stabilizer in southern Kaduna, someone who can wash away the anguish of our people after years of hopelessness and despair, someone who can rekindle the hope of our IDPs, students, farmers, and our ravaged communities. The forum further called on the PDP aspirant in the zone who did not scale the primaries to join hand with the party to ensure the success of the party in the 2023 election. APC, by uh, uh, embarking on having Muslim Muslim ticket in, as their flag, in their flag, shows that they are not willing to unite the people. Just like you said, Nigeria is a complex state and is a multi-ethnic and multi-religious state. Kaduna State is a multi-ethnic and uh, 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 multi-religious state. In another development, a PDP group from the southern Kaduna at a stakeholders meeting kicked against a Muslim-Muslim governorship ticket in the state. The group from the southern Kaduna appealed to all stakeholders of the party to pull resources together to ensure the success of the party at the poll. Now talking crime, operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have arrested a 27-year-old drug baroness, Mrs. Opola Mujidat, for planting drugs concealed in fetish bowls on two Oman-bound male passengers at the departure hall of the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Lagos. The passenger, Raji Babatunde Kazim, and Akim Bobola Omoni, who are traveling together to Oman on an Ethiopian airline flight on Monday, 11th July, when they were intercepted by NDLA operatives at the airport. Here is more on the activities of the agency in the last one week. A search of their luggage revealed wrap of cannabis sativa, hidden in bowls of native black soap and sponge packed into a bag containing food items, which Kazim was carrying. Both Kazim and Omoni immediately alerted the anti-narcotic officers that Mujidat, who was still within the vicinity, gave the bag containing the illicit substance to them at the airport. She confessed to the crime and stated that she brought the luggage for the two passengers to give to her husband in Oman. In Nasarawa State, NDLEA operative intercepted over 91 jumbo bags of cannabis weighing 1.295 kilogram concealed in a truck-mounted natural gas tank by Doma Road around 500 housing estate in Lafia. A 52-year-old suspect, N.S. Ojihi, 
was arrested in connection with the seizure on Saturday 9th July. In Kaduna and Nasarawa, over half a million of pills of pharmaceutical opioids were seized and suspects arrested in raid operations across the two states. In Kaduna alone, 2,941 pills of tramadol and diazepam were seized from Shaban Nasser, Aminu Usman and Shamshuddin Husseini along Abuja Kaduna Express Road as well as Saidu Yahya and Umar Abubakar during a follow-up operation in Kano, all on Friday 15th July 2022. In the same vein, over 2,200 different grades of tramadol tablets were seized during the raid of a patent medicine store at Sabon Lai, close to Mubi Main Market, Mubi North Local Government Area, Adamawa State, on Sunday 3rd July. While commanding the officers and men of the MMIA, Nasarawa, Kaduna, and Adamawa commands for the arrest, Shazer, their dexterity, Chairman Chief Executive Officer NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohammed Buba Marwa, retired in a statement signed by the agency's Director of Media and Advocacy, Femi Baba Femi, warned drug cartels that no matter the iniquity of their modes of concealment, the delicate workforce of the agency will always expose them and their tricks. In business, the price of crude oil climbed above the $100 mark on Sunday, hitting $101.16, I beg your pardon, per barrel, after trading around $98 per barrel since Tuesday, as oil marketers in Nigeria maintained an increased pump price for a premium motor spirit, popularly called petrol, higher than the approved rate. Industry figures seen on Sunday show that Brent, the international benchmark for crude, moved up by $2.06 or 2.08 percent to close at $101.16 per barrel as at 6.36 p.m. Nigerian time. The report showed that Brent dropped in price by $7.72 to close at $99.38 per barrel as at 7.45 p.m. Nigerian time last Tuesday, a development that has persisted for most part of last week. And finally, away from Nigeria, the European Union is set to discuss tightening sanctions against Russia on Monday. Bloc's foreign ministers say are considering banning gold purchases from Russia, which would align with sanctions already imposed by G7 partners. Meanwhile, as Russia prepares for the next stage of its offensive in Ukraine, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu has instructed the military to prioritize destroying Ukraine's long-range missile and artillery weapons. With this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.